Hello, wonderful students. Today we're going to talk about invertebrates. We talked about them last week. We talked about sponges and we talked about snoderians. Today we're going to talk about arthropods and echinoderms. So what is an arthropod? We have the butterfly in the background. So I'm assuming that we're going to assume the butterflies. If you assume the butterflies are arthropods, you are correct. Arthropod what? Arthropod means jointed legs. You see these wonderful little insects. What are the arthropods think animals are in, um, do you think might be arthropods? Right, you're right. So now one of our featured arthropods is locusts. In March, they some reporters reported from the British um, BBC or British Channel that locusts bring threat to East Africa, the Gulf states, India, Iran, Pakistan, and Yemen. And you see in the background, this this guy is an uh, African guy is fighting off so many locusts that they look like they can take them away. And that can be alarming. The locust is a problem because they're eating up the crop in Nairobi, Africa, or Nairobi, Kenya, which is a part of Nairobi, Kenya, which is a part of Africa. Locusts are arthropods. These are a type of insect, and they are really large grasshoppers. And so it becomes a problem if we don't keep some of the things in control. So our octopod groups include crustaceans, such as crabs, arachnids, such as spiders, and our last group includes centipedes, millipedes, insects, bees, and ants. So what belong, What are the groups of the octopods? Crustaceans, which are crabs, arachnids, which are spiders, and then centipedes, millipedes, insects, bees, and ants. Right. So octopods have external skeletons, or what we call exoskeletons. They have appendages, which includes legs, wings, and antenna. You may think a crab, spider, and locust don't have much in common, but they do have the legs and appendages, and some may even, um, not spiders, but bees and some others have wings. So that's what makes them put them in groups like that. But all of these are considered octopods, which include crabs, arachnids, or spiders, insects, centipedes, and millipedes. So our next featured guest is the tarantula. Oh, who likes tarantulas? I'm not bothered by them, but I don't have to live by them. I don't, I'm not afraid of spiders, but I'm not too fond of some other creepy crawlers. So exoskeletons are protective armor. So octopods have protective armors. High exoskeletons like armor, it protects animals, especially octopods' bodies from damage. And these octopods then are able to, you know, they're protected. And the octopods are invertebrates, which have a hard covering. Okay, let's review. Have a segmented body and a pair of jointed appendages. Now, here we have our featured guest. It's the centipede. You see how creepy that little centipede you have? And I have a, I found a little music video when I was in middle school by this lady named Reedy, Reedy Jackson. And she is, Reba Jackson is Michael Jackson's sister, older sister, if you ever, if you remember the Michael Jackson's family. So I'm going to play just a little bit of that for you to hear, and then we're going to move on. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the museum's most treasured masterpiece, Centipede, a portrait of a woman with true romance and beauty. Tonight, she will come back to show the world her special powers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, I had to cut it off because we do have a lesson. I want to keep it a certain amount of time. Our next part of our presentation is stemming it. Insects, 72%. Let me hide it. So what is the percentage of in not insects? What percentage of animals are not insects? You're correct. It's 28%. What percent of animals are invertebrates but not insects? You're correct. 23%. And then our next question that we want to think about is because you don't always want teachers to give you answers, how the legs of spiders and bees alike and different? Yes, both of them can be a little prickly legs. Bees um, have sticky legs and then spiders have legs that allow you to spring up um, webs. And maybe some of you have even more insight about it. So our last thing we're going to talk about is echinoderms. It's an echinoderm. So let's talk about echinoderms. Echinoderms have what something called radio symmetry, and that means that echinoderms are able to, um, if you were to cut them or cut up their parts around the circle, then you would get identical parts. Some echinoderms include sea stars, starfish, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and brittle stars. So echinoderms, again, are invertebrates. They have endoskeletons or skeletons. They have a system of tubes. Those tubes allow the echinoderms to move, obtain food, and oxygen. So what are the purpose of the tubes for echinoderms? To move, obtain food, and oxygen. And now a quick review. So the starfish here has, it's a shape, it's a star, have short arms and they have radial symmetry. Sea cucumbers, they're long and round, have radial symmetry. Brittle stars, they're shaped like stars, long arms, radial symmetry. Sea urchins, round and spotty and radial symmetry. Some things that may have in common, some of them are shaped like stars, but the main thing they have in common is this, they have radial symmetry. And most of these are found in the ocean, in the deep ocean. So we just can't walk up on them most of the time. So review, what are invertebrates? Oh, okay. Invertebrates include arthropods, echinoderms, cnidarians, and sponges. A bee with an appendage is considered a? Right, arthropod, good. What group does cephalopods and squids belong to? You're right, should be cnidarians. And which group use fluid filled tubes to um, move and get food and oxygen? Echinoderms. Awesome. So this concludes our lesson. And I will see you on next time.